Okay. Thank you, bro. Okay, so we are reading Chaitanya Charitamrit, Adi Leela, chapter 5, and today we're going to start with text 66. Everybody got it? Yes, Prabhuji. Great. Okay. Ek anga anga bhase kare maya te milan maya ho te jangmita ve vimhande rakaan Translation. The reflected rays of the body mixed with maya and maya gives birth to myriad universes. So, okay. I'll explain this in the purport. I think much better explained. So, let's, let's go to purport. Who wants to read the first paragraph? I can read, Prabhuji. Go ahead, Prabhuji. Purport. The Vedic conclusion is that the Cosmic manifestation visible to the eyes of the conditioned soul is caused by the absolute truth, the personality of Godhead, uh, through the excursion of a specific energies. Although in the conclusion of atheistic deliberation, this manifested cosmic exhibition is attributed to material nature, the energy of the absolute truth is exhibited in three ways, spiritual, material, and marginal. The absolute truth is identical with his spiritual energy. Only when contracted by the uh, contracted with the spiritual energy can be material energy work and the temporary material manifestations thus appear active. In the conditioned state of living entities, of the marginal energy are a mixture of spiritual and material energies. The marginal energy is originally under the control of the spiritual energy, but under the control of the material energy, the living entity has been wandering in forgetfulness within the material world since time immemorial. Yeah, thank you, Prabhuji. So this is very, very important. The whole purport is very, very important to understand what's actually happening. And again, a lot of it is a repeat of what we have already discussed, but I think this is one of those topics that the more we repeat, I think the chances are we understand it better. So, so let's do that. Uh, first of all, it's saying that the cosmic manifestation, which means the material world is manifested by the energy of the Supreme Personality of God not by material nature, as the atheist will have you believe. So everybody agrees with that point? Yes, Prabhuji. Okay, so that's one point. The second point is that only when the Lord exerts his spiritual energy on the material energy that the manifestations occur. Otherwise, there's no power. There's no empowerment, there's no power, there's nothing. So the Lord's energy is causing Maya to act. So that's the second point. Third point is that there are three energies of uh, the Lord that we talk about. The spiritual, the marginal, and the, what's the last one? Material. Material, material. or external. Yeah, material or external. So those are the three. Now, the Lord is not different from his spiritual energy. Okay, what's the other name for spiritual energy? There's something Maya. Yogamaya. Yogamaya, exactly. Yes. So, Lord is not from Yogamaya, and Yogamaya has different um, divisions, you can say. One of them is Leela Shakti. What is Leela Shakti? The Shakti that allows the Lord to perform his pastimes. Pastimes, yeah, right? So, that's spiritual energy. Material energy is what we know as Maya or Mahamaya, which controls the material world. And as we saw here, also with the empowerment, uh, creates the material. Okay. Third is called marginal energy. Who's marginal energy? Mixture of both. Who is that? Jeev. Jeev. So we, are, we are marginal energy. Yeah. Which means we can be either in the under the control of material energy or under the control of spiritual energy. Okay. Yeah. So 
Okay? And as, as Mataji said, we are the mixture of spiritual and material energy when we are in conditioned state. Yeah. Okay? Only when we are in the conditioned state, we are a mixture of both. We are called marginal also because we can either be under the control of spiritual energy or material energy. Initially, we were under the control of spiritual energy. Then, by our wrong choice of saying we want to be the Lord, we want to be the enjoyer, we were put under the influence of external energy. So now in the conditioned state, we are all under the control of material external energy. And it's so difficult that in chapter 7, text 14, Krishna says, what does he say? Daivi esha gurumai mama maya gurumai. It's very difficult to overcome that. But then he gives a process. The only process he says is mamevje prepadante maya etan tarante. Only those who surrender to me can get out of the clutches of external energy. Otherwise, you're stuck here for eternity. That will be known as eternally conditioned. Since time immemorial, you've been conditioned. And somebody gave a very nice example. He said, suppose you put a few marbles under an upside-down uh, bowl. And you move the bowl rapidly. What will happen to the the marbles? Any thoughts? Sorry, Prabhu. Repeat. Let's take. Let's repeat. You, you take a few marbles, put them under an upside down bowl, and you move the bowl here and there, everywhere. What happens to the marbles? It will, it will be moved along with the ball. Sorry, one person, please. What do you say? Uh, it will move along with the uh, ball. Within the ball. Yeah. Right? They move like crazy within the ball, but they cannot escape the ball. Right? That's what's happening to us. We can move around 84, 8.4 million species, up and down, sideways, you know, but we're still, still, still in the material world. Can't get out until somebody lifts the ball, and that is what surrendering to Krishna means. Then he lifts the the ball. Okay. Any questions on that? That is what he's saying. We are under the control of material energy. The living entities have been wandering in the forgetfulness within the material world since time and more. So we forgotten our relationship with Krishna. We've forgotten Krishna. And therefore, wandering in the material world since time in one. Brahman, Brahmatekano, Adhvani. We've been wandering in the different universes since time in one. Okay? Somebody wants to read the next paragraph? I can read Prabhu. Go ahead. The conditioned state is casual, is caused by misuse of the individual independence of the spiritual platform for the separate for this separates the living entity from the association of the spiritual energy but when the living entity is enlightened by the grace of supreme lord or his pure devotee and becomes inclined to re revive the his original state of loving service he is on the most auspicious platform of eternal bliss and knowledge. The marginal jiva or living entity misuses his independence and becomes averse to the eternal service attitude when, the independ when he independently thinks he is not uh, energy, but the energetic. The misconception of his own existence lead him to the attitude of lording it over material nature. Okay. Thank you. Again, very important paragraph. So, how did we become conditioned when we were originally under the control of the spiritual energy and at that time we were unconditioned? So, what happened? Any thoughts? We were envious. We, okay, we were envious. That's one thing. What else happened? We thought of enjoying like the Lord was enjoying. 
Okay, what has happened? We forgot we... to serve. Go ahead, yeah, go ahead. It's okay. We we forgot to serve him. And... Yeah, okay. And uh, became um, self-centered, like yes. I, yes. me, I, just thinking about uh, uh, one own self. Yes. So we came in competition, basically. We yes. Wanted to... yeah. Yes, absolutely. So basically, we had independent, sorry, we had free will. What is the free will we have? Like we can do anything we like. That is our free will. Is that really our free will? We can do anything we like? Free will well, means... No, no, but what is our free will? Whether we want to serve Krishna or we don't want to serve Krishna. Right. Is there anything else beyond that for us? No. No. So that's all. only free will. We can decide to serve Krishna or we can decide to serve Maya. Maya. Yeah. In other words, we have... Krishna is completely independent, right? He's known as Swarat. Therefore, we are also independent. But if we use our independence to be dependent upon Krishna, then we are in a good place. When we use our independence to become independent of Krishna, then we are in a bad place. Does everybody understand that point? Very clearly. Right? So, when we try to become independent of Krishna, it's okay. Now you are on your own. So you don't want my supernatural. So then Maya says, Ah, okay. Krishna, I am. I am. Yeah, Nikita is the Maya Tare Japatiya. So Maya pounces upon that living entity like a cat pounces upon a rat. That quickly and that forcibly. And that completely. So then Ma the living entity comes under the control of Maya, which is ironic because who's superior energy? Living entity or Maya? Who's superior energy? Living entity or Maya? Living entity. Maya. Maya. Okay, so I heard two different answers. Three people said Maya. I think one person said living entity. Yeah, Prabhuji, I said the living entity. Living different. entity yeah. as well, me too. Okay, that's a three to two. Okay. I I say the same thing, Prabhuji. Living Which entity, one? living entity living is living entity. Entity. okay. So now we have a tie, three three to three. So I'll <laughs> I'll I'll uh, do the deciding vote, Toss. and uh, the three with the living entity wins. So we are spiritual energy. Remember that living entities are. Spiritual energy. Right? Also, if you remember chapter 8, text uh, 5, what does it say? Antakale Chamameva. No, no, I'm sorry, I, did, I didn't say it right. Chapter 7, text 5, which is, um, you know, in 4, is, is it, yeah, 4, he says, oh uh, my God, uh, the, the eight different energies, um, how does it start? Can somebody just Google it? I can't remember the first line. 7.4. Uh, it is Bhumi Rapo Analog. Yes, Bhumi Rapo Analog. Why you come on out to Why you come on out to Yeah. Vinda Pakiti Ashta. Then do the next one. Next 7.5. Bhumi Rapo Analog. Aparayam Itastwanya. Aparayam Itastwanya. He's saying that but the superior energy to these eight. That is Jeev Bhuta, living entity. So Krishna is saying in that verse, living entities are superior to material energy. Because we are spiritual. Material is not. So we are superior. So the point I'm trying to make is that because we are infinitesimal in size, despite the fact that we are superior energy, we come under the control of inferior energy called Maya. It's like when you talk about mergers of the companies, like David taking over Goliath. So small company taking over very large company. Same thing. Something superior gets under the control of something inferior. Living entity, the superior energy, comes under the control of living uh, 
inferior material energy simply because they misuse their independence. So is that clear? Yeah. How do we come under the control of Maya? Because we misuse our independence. Try to become the Lord. Try to become yeah. a joy. To not have accept the superintendence of the Lord. We gave up, we tried to give up our eternal nature. What is our eternal nature? To serve the supreme personality of Godhead. To serve, yeah. To serve in our eternal nature. We tried to become the boss that's against our nature. So then we came under the control of mind. So that's the first thing. Okay. And when we come under the control of Maya, then we become separated from the association of Yoga Maya. Right? And that is why we are known as separated part and parcel of Krishna. Does everybody understand that? We are known as separated energy or separated part and parcel of Krishna. Who is the integrated part and parcel of Krishna? The soul. No. Conditioned souls, we are separated. Right? So the, all the integrated are the, the Vishnu Tattva expansions of Krishna. There is no difference. The potency of any Vishnu Tattva expansion of Krishna. We are separated because we gave up the association of Yoga Maya. Okay. So then it says, when the living entity is enlightened by the grace of the Supreme Lord or his pure devotee, and becomes inclined to revive his original state of loving service. It's on the most auspicious platform of eternal peace is done. So we come back to our original platform of Satchit and Anand, when by the mercy of a devotee or the Lord himself, we come back to our senses and say, no, no, we are the servants, we is the Lord, and that's what we want to do. Okay. Okay, so and when we we are thinking independently, then we think we are the Lord, and everybody is our servant. So we start thinking we are the energetic, not the energy, and that is what causes us to start thinking that we can lord over anything in the material nature. Any questions or comments on that? Okay, let's do the next one. I will read probably. Go ahead, Prabhu. When covered by the cloud of material no, 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 energy. No, no, before that. No. Sorry. Material no. nature appears to be just the opposite of the spiritual energy. The fact is that material energy can work only when in contact with the spiritual energy. Originally, the energy of Krishna is spiritual, but it works in diverse ways, like electrical energy which can exhibit the functions of refrigerating or heating through its manifestation in different ways. The material energy is spiritual energy covered by a cloud of illusion or maya. Therefore, the material energy is not self-sufficient in working. Krishna invests his spiritual energy into material energy and then it can act just as iron can act like fire after being heated by fire. The material energy can act only when empowered by the spiritual energy. Right. So the point being made here is that the spiritual, sorry, the material energy can work only when empowered by the spiritual energy. <laughs> there is a very wonderful verse, Brahma Samhita, text 44. It says, Shrashti Sthiti Pralaya Sadhav Shakti Reka Saying about material energy, that it is like the shadow of the spiritual energy. Now it's a very good example because sorry, the next slide says it's it does whatever the spiritual energy of Krishna wants it to do. So it's a very apt example because. If you look at your shadow, what is the one characteristic of shadow? That is, the shadow will move only and exactly the way you move. It cannot move independently. So if you raise your left hand, in the shadow you see your left hand raised. You move your right hand, you see right hand raised. 
You walk, shadow will walk. You stand still, shadow will stand still. So shadow cannot do anything independent of you. And if it moves, it moves only when you move. So same thing with that material energy. It is a shadow of the spiritual energy. Therefore, it cannot act independent of spiritual energy. And, and cannot act until it's empowered by the spiritual energy. So it's inert <clears throat> until Krishna says, okay, my spiritual is flowing to you now, now you can act. Until then, it's just inert. No action. No activity. Okay? Second point is being made here is that Krishna's energy is actually only one, but it manifests different ways. An example is given that electricity, it can heat and it can cool. You plug in a heater, you get heat from the same electricity. You plug in an air conditioner, same electricity gives you cooling. Similarly, Krishna's energy. Energy is one. What's manifesting as spiritual energy or material energy? Clear? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Let's move to the third paragraph then. Fourth paragraph. Sorry. Can I read too? Yeah, of course. When covered by the cloud of material energy, the living entity, who is also a spiritual energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, forgets about the activities of the spiritual energy and considers all that happens in the material manifestation to be wonderful. But a person who is engaged in devotional service in full Krishna consciousness and who is therefore already situated in the spiritual energy can understand that the material energy has no independent powers. Whatever actions are going on are due to the help of the spiritual energy. The material energy, which is a perverted form of the spiritual energy, presents everything pervertedly, thus causing misconceptions and duality. Material scient scientists and philosophers conditioned by the spell of material nature suppose that material energy acts automatically and therefore they are frustrated like an illusion person who tries to get milk from the nipple-like bunches of skin on the neck of the goat. As there is no possibility of getting milk from these bunches of skin, there is similarly no possibility that anyone will be successful in understanding the original cause of creation by putting forward theories produced by the material energy. Such an attempt is a manifestation of ignorance. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so we talked about how the material energy controls the superior marginal energy that's us. So when that happens, then the living entity forgets about the activities of the yoga maya or spiritual energy. And considers that everything that's happening is the because of the material energy and it's wonderful. Okay? But a pure devotee who is in Krishna consciousness understands that, that uh, the material energy cannot act independently. It can act only when empowered by the spiritual energy. Next point being made is that the material energy is a perverted form of spiritual energy. So everything that's happening in the material world is perverted form of whatever is happening in the spiritual world. So in the spiritual world, you have love. What do we have in the material world? Lust. Lust, exactly. Um, in the uh, spiritual world, we have selflessness. What do we have in the material world? Selfness. Selfless. Selfless. Selfish. 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 So this is why Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 15, text 1, describing the material world, he says, Udh Moolam Adho Shakha Ashwatham Prahuravyam. He says, the material is like an upside down banyan tree. So everything is upside down here. 
Uh, it's a very apt example of the tree because imagine a tree beside a river and you see that reflection in the river. The tree is on the land, reflection is in the water. Right? The tree you go up, with the reflection you go down. Right? And then a whole bunch of other examples like there's no taste and so on and so forth. But the point is, it's a very apt example that everything is upside down in the material. But whatever is here exists in the spiritual world, otherwise it cannot exist. Because everything in the material is a reflection. You cannot have a reflection without the real thing. Can you get a reflection in your mirror without standing in front of it? No, no impossible. So something has to be there. Without the real thing, you cannot have reflection. The so same thing. Real thing is the spiritual world. Reflection is in the material world. Yes. And as, as in reflection, everything is upside down or, or the other way. So in the reflection, right hand looks like? In the reflection in a mirror, what does the right hand look like? Left. Left hand, exactly. The left hand looks like right hand. Right? Up, again, totally opposite. So same thing here. Okay? And therefore, for anybody to try and explain that material world is a result of the activity of the material nature which is acting independently, it's not correct. That's ignorance. Because material nature cannot do anything without being infused with spiritual energy. And we talked about the example of the potter and the pots. You can have the clay, you can have the water, you can have the wheel, you can have the stick, but no pot coming out until the potter gets involved and then the pots go. Okay. Next paragraph, please. I'll read privacy. The material energy of the Supreme Personality of God is called Maya or illusion because in two capacities by supplying the material elements and by causing the material manifestation. It makes the condi conditioned soul unable to understand the real truth of creation. However, when, <clears throat> when a living entity is liberated from the con conditioned life of matter, he can understand the two different activities of material nature, namely covering, covering and bewildering. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so number of points are being made here. Basically, the main point is that the, that under illusion, which comes from the influence of Maya, the living entity is not able to understand that there are really two parts of Maya. One is the supply of the ingredients, talking about that before. The second is manifestation of those ingredients. So the living is not able to understand how that is happening and what is the real truth. So that's the first point. The second point is that the Maya, the external potency, has two potencies, two divisions of its potencies. One is called covering potency, and another is called bewildering or projectile potency. Does anybody know what that is? What is covering potency and bewildering potency? No. Okay. So covering potency of Maya covers your identity. What is our identity? What is our identity? We are the we are the eternal soul, Prabhuji. Eternal soul, the eternal servant. Yeah, eternal servant. Eternal servant. So it yes, covers yes. that knowledge. As a result, you start thinking with the Lord. It also, it also covers who's the God or the Lord. And also covers what is our relationship with the Lord. So that's the covering potency part. The second is called bewildering or projectile, which means throws us away from Krishna. And as soon as we get thrown away from Krishna and turn our face away from Krishna, we become bewildered because we are thinking real is unreal, unreal is real. Okay, and that's what illusion means. You start thinking rope is a snake, 
and snake is a rogue. So these two potencies of the Maya are cleared when we are on pure devotional platform. Until then, we are covered by these two. Our knowledge of who we are, who Krishna is, what our relationship is. And we will read because we start thinking what is not real is real. Okay? Let's do the next paragraph. Continue, Prabhu. Please go ahead. The origin of creation is the supreme personality of Godhead. As confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, test 10, the cosmic manifestation is working under the direction of the Supreme Lord, who invests the man material energy with three material qualities. Agitated by these qualities, the elements supplied by the material energy produce varieties of things. Just as an artist produces varieties of pictures by mixing the three colors, red, yellow, and blue. Yellow represents the quality of goodness. Red represents passion. and The blue represents ignorance. Therefore, the colorful material creation is but an interaction of these three qualities represented in 81 varieties of mixtures. Three times three equaling nine, nine times nine thus equaling 81. Deluded by material energy, the conditioned soul, <clears throat> enamored by these 81 varieties of manifestations, wants to lord it over the material energy, just as a moth wants to enjoy a fire. This illusion is the net result of the conditioned soul's forgetfulness of its eternal relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When conditioned, the soul is impelled by the material energy to engage in sense gratification, Whereas one enlightened by the spiritual energy engages himself in the service of the Supreme Lord in his eternal relationship. Right. Yeah, thank you, Prabhu. So, uh, Prabhu is reminding us that Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, text 10, Krishna says, Maya Dakshar Prakriti Suhite Satcharachar. That the material world and the material energy is working under my superintendence. So, they do what I tell them to do. Okay. Um, and then it says that the material energy has three qualities, or we call them modes. What are the three qualities? Goodness, passion, passion and ignorance. And right. And then Prabhupada is saying they're like three colors, the three original colors. What are the three original colors? Red, yellow, blue. Red, yellow, and blue. So it says... Yellow represents the quality of goodness, red represents passion, and blue represents ignorance. So, whatever we see in the material world is because of the interaction of these three qualities. Okay? So, you have, um, and you can mix them in a variety of ways. And uh, just just by the do you know if you mix uh, yellow and blue, what color do you get? Green. Green, exactly. So similarly, the different combinations you can do that and produce millions of varieties, actually, depending on the quantity of one particular mode, another particular mode, or you mixing two only or all three. So my point is that this is how you get the material manifestation of various varieties. That's how the variety. Variegatedness comes in. Uh, even the natures of the people, same thing. Some have more goodness than passion. Some have more ignorance than goodness, so on and so forth. We have a combination of all three, all of us, and that's why our nature is different. Okay. So, having been illusioned or deluded, deluded by material energy, we start thinking upside down, which is, I'm not a servant, I'm the boss. I'm not that to be enjoyed, I'm the enjoyer. I'm not that to be owned, I'm the owner or proprietor, so on and so forth. Everything goes upside down. But, very this example, we want to lord it over material energy just as a moth wants to enjoy a fire. What happens to the moth that wants to enjoy a fire? That burn. That's just it's burned completely. Completely. That's what happens to us. We keep getting burnt. Every time we try to lord it over, we get burnt. But we don't learn the lesson. Okay. 
And again, it's happening because we have forgotten due to the covering potency of the Maya, our eternal relationship with the Lord, which is, I'm the servant, you are the boss. And therefore, thinking that we are the boss, thinking that we are the enjoyer, we want our senses to be gratified. But if we are pure devotees and we have the knowledge of the spiritual energy, then we know who we are. We are a servant and we say, sir, we know we have to be enjoyed. We act for Krishna to enjoy ourselves. We act as if whatever we have actually belongs to Krishna. Our house we simply renter, house belongs to Krishna. Our money is given to us by Krishna for use in his service. Right? Isha was a Siddham Sarvam, Ted Kitchi Jagatam Jagat, Ted Tekter Munjitam, Bagadakar Sitara. Right? Whatever he gives us is simply for his enjoyment. But in the con conditioned state, we forget all that. We are thinking the opposite. No, I'm the enjoyer, I'm the proprietor. It's mine, mine, mine. Okay? Any questions on that? Okay, somebody did the Guruji. next ah, Yes. So there's a 3.23, it's a 9, and then again it's a 9 into 9, 81 probably, that uh, 81 combinations. How it is showing up there? Yeah, bro, I'm not sure. Um, three times three. I'm not even sure nine. what he's trying to say. Mm -hmm. here. The three qualities. Well, where's the other three coming from? I'm not sure what what he's saying. Okay, bro. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I don't know. This, this is 8.4 million species. I mean, this is how it becomes. No, like this is something we right. Say, say it again, bro. 8.4 million varieties of species in the world. So it's like this combination of these 81, 81 times 81. Yeah, it keeps going. 81 times 81? The, the, the same principle, no, it gets extended up to 8.4 million. Oh, I see. So you will they keep multiplying the numbers. Yeah. Okay. The combination of all these, that's how the 8.4 million varieties of species in the material world. I remember reading in Bhagavad Gita, ninth chapter, somewhere. Okay, I'll have to look it up, Prabhu. I'm not sure, but I understand you're saying that it's basically multiplying numbers that result by themselves again and again and again until you get 8.4 million. Uh, yeah, Aditi? Prabhu, I just have a question other than this. Uh, so, we, uh, whenever we have any activity, we, if it is pleasurable, we do experience that pleasure, right? We do experience that pleasure. And somehow we get attracted towards those things. Even if we know this is temporary and all, we still enjoy that rush of it. Aren't we made that way, you know? We don't feel, you know, that, you know, how we talk about it, that it's temporary, everything is, temporary, this is not going to last, but still we go for them and we do find pleasure also, Prabhu. So how do we get rid of all those things then? Because we find pleasure. It's not that we are not finding pleasure. When you're talking pleasure, I talk about material pleasure or spiritual pleasure? Yeah, I'm talking about material. No, no, I know that. And the material pleasure is applicable to the body or the soul? Body, Prabhu. Body, right? So, as long as we keep thinking we are this body, material pleasure will feel good because we are into sense gratification. Senses want to see, eyes want to see something beautiful, see something beautiful, we are happy. Tongue wants to taste something, you know, wonderful, we get that, let's go or some dish or your dosa, you know, and you feel happy because the tongue is satisfied, so on and so forth, right? But Krishna, so yes, we are happy temporarily because Krishna says in 522, chapter 5, text 22, Yes, as Prashadab Every material happiness is a mother. Mother of what? Misery. Misery. Right? So sooner or later, after material happiness, 
messages will follow. If you have ever drunk too much, you know. If you have ever eat meat too much, you know. If you ever indulge in other activities, you know because the consequences are there. Right? It's so stress. the pleasure is temporary. But at the body level, anything is temporary. Mm -hmm. So when we say we in your example, we talk about the body. But we turn it around and we say we as a soul, there is no pleasure in these things. Where's the, the what's the only thing that gives pleasure to the soul? Seva. Seva to whom? God. Krishna. To Krishna, exactly. Savai punsam paro dharmo jato bhakti ya dokshaja ahayatu ki ya prati hata ye yatma sapishati Kanto 1, chapter 2, text 6. Sudha Goswami is making it very clear. Only time the soul is happy when we perform service to the Lord in an unmotivated, means unselfish way and kirtiniya sadari all the time. Otherwise, soul is not happy. Otherwise, soul is like a fish out of water. And then give it all the silk and beds and gold, uh, whatever, and the best food, fish is not happy. It wants to be under the water. Similarly, soul cannot be happy in material world, no matter what. Prabhu, such a good answer. I hope I always remember this. <laughs> such a good Thank answer. You. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, let's go on. Who wants to read the next one? I will read Prabhuji. Please go ahead, go. Okay, so the origin, origin of creation is the supreme personality of Godhead. As no, 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 of material manifestation. He is also the original cause of marginal potential, the living entities. He is both the leader and maintainer of the living entities who are called the marginal potential because they act, they can act under the protection of the spiritual energy or under the cover of the material energy. With the help of the spiritual energy, we can understand that independence is visible only in Krishna, who by his inconceivable energy is able to act in any way he likes. Thank you. So in the first canto, first first chapter, first verse, Janmariya Seta, it says, Krishna is Abhigya Surat. He knows everything and is completely independent. Our minute independence is coming from him also. But the real independent person is only one. And that is Krishna. Okay, now, just, just in case you're getting confused, when we say Krishna, we also mean all his incarnations. We say the third incarnation. So, he's the only one who is independent. Everybody else is dependent. So, similarly, we talk about um, our pleasure. Is our pleasure always good? Or is it always bad? Or is something different? What do you think? Our pleasure is not always good. Not always means it's sometimes good? Sometimes maybe if Krishna wants. I don't know. It's okay. good only when we are serving the Supreme Personality, Prabhuji. Hmm? So, okay, yeah, let's let's stay with what you just said. You say our pleasure is only good when we're serving the God. Right? Is that what you said? Right, Prabhuji. Okay, so the answer is correct. Can you elaborate a little more why that is so? When we serve the Supreme Personality of God without any selfish motive, without any selfish promotion uh, or any uh, name and fame, then only we can be happy. Then only that is the, our real motive. Right. No, I am agreeing. I am saying what is the process? But how did that happen? Yes, Aditi? Bye. By the association of the devotees or by the studying the scriptures or follow the following the instructions of our spiritual master, Prabhuji. Okay. All right. Yeah, Aditi, you raise your hand. So, Prabhuji, I was saying that uh, Jiva's uh, nature is to serve Lord. Right. And if to serve Lord, then we feel happiness. And that happiness is permanent. 
Right. No, again, you're saying basically what Prabhu was saying, and that is correct. My question is, what is the process? How do we become happy by making Krishna happy? Can I try, Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu, Radha Prabhu. Go ahead. So, Prabhu, if we are serving God selflessly, that makes Lord happy. So, that's how God gets satisfied. And once He's satisfied, everyone gets satisfied. You got it. Yeah, that's it. So, the process is, our happiness is coming from Krishna. When we make him happy, in the in return he makes us happy. So therefore, our happiness comes from two sources. One is from material things, and one is from Krishna. When it comes from material things, it's called independent happiness. And that's not good for us. And does not make the soul happy. When it's coming from Krishna, it's called dependent happiness. Because this happiness is dependent upon the happiness of Krishna. Are you with me? Yes, yes that's all. So that dependent happiness is the good thing. And that is the real pleasure. The soul will get the pleasure because coming through Krishna, from Krishna, because we made Krishna happy. Okay, does that make sense? Yep. So this is yes. why I distinguish between the two happiness. One is good happiness, one is not so good happiness. Good is a dependent one. I'm sorry? Good happiness is dependent one on Krishna. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Hi, Krishna Bhu. Uh, hi, Krishna Gaitri. Hi, Krishna Bhu. Uh, you know, I think the challenge is, like, we're so used to this um, material happiness that we don't even feel it when we're doing anything spiritual, probably because our spirituality is not pure. We don't feel any happiness from that. We're so deep, we're so conditioned to yeah. material happiness that we don't get enough from the spiritual happiness, and actually, it sometimes takes you away. So it's a very good point. So let me, in support of your point, let me draw a scenario. Um, obviously, you are a vegetarian. You go to somebody's house and they make the best, best possible meat. That anybody else who's, who's a non vegetarian would be like grueling. <laughs> Do you get any pleasure from that? No. No. Why? Because you have no taste for it. Do you agree? That's the real reason why we will not uh, grow your saliva over meat. Correct? Yes. Similarly, we have no taste for chanting, we have no taste for serving Krishna. We have no taste for making him happy. We were so busy wanting us to be happy. We were so busy doing things for ourselves. We are so interested only in ourselves. There is no taste for something. There is no taste for chanting, etc., etc. So therefore, we don't get happiness. If we get the taste, we will get so much happiness, we never want to stop chanting. Right? This story about Lord Chaitanya, he was going to the washroom holding his tongue. Somebody said, why are you holding your tongue? He said, well, you know, I, I can't stop chanting. But when I go to the washroom, I was told I should not be chanting there because the holy name will get contaminated. Right? So it's further story about how he got corrected. It was just Leela on his part. And my point is that if your taste will not stop chanting anywhere, anytime, not at 16 rounds, not at 64 rounds, you'll be doing Haridas Thakur, 192 rounds. Right? So that's the problem. Yes. Thank you, Babaji. Sure. Okay, let's do the next. Wow, this is long. The whole class is one one verse. <laughs> okay. Let's do the last paragraph here, please. I can read it, Prabhu. Go ahead, please. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the absolute whole and the living entities are parts of the absolute whole. This relationship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the living entities is eternal. One should never mistakenly think that the spiritual whole can be divided into small parts by the small material energy. The Bhagavad Gita does not support this Mayave, Mayava theory. Rather, it clearly states that the living entities are eternally small fragments of the supreme spiritual whole 
as a part can never be equal with the whole. So a living entity as the minute fragment of the spiritual whole cannot be equal at any time to the supreme whole, the absolute personality of Godhead. Although the supreme Lord and the living entities are quantitatively related as the whole and the parts, the parts are nevertheless quantitatively qualitatively one with the whole. Thus, the living entities, although always qualitatively one with the Supreme Lord, are in a relative position. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the controller of everything and the living entities are always controlled either by the spiritual or by the material energy. Therefore, a living entity can never become the controller of the material or spiritual, spiritual energies. The, nat the natural position of the living being is always as a subordinate of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When one agrees to act in such a position, he attains perfection in life, but if one rebels against this principle, he is in the conditioned state. Yeah. Thank you. So, very important point is being made. Of points are being made here. One point is, the first point is that we are infinitesimal part of Krishna. We are eternally a part of Krishna. And as a part of Krishna, we can never be equal to Krishna. A part can never be equal to the whole. So we can never be part of Krishna. We can never become Krishna. So that's against whatever Maya was saying. We can never be equal to Krishna. So that's one point. Second point is that, yes, quantitatively, quantitatively we are very really small. Krishna is very big. But qualitatively, we are same. Okay. Which qualities are we talking about? All the qualities of Krishna. Qualitatively, we are same as Krishna. So what qualities are we talking about? Like... Wealth. Uh, no. no. Uh, Independence, Prabhuji. Huh? Independence. No. No, Huh? Yes, yes, who said that? Sat Chit Anand. Yes. yes, yes. I was trying to figure out who said that. Okay, all right. Anyway, yeah, so Sat Chit Anand are three qualities that are in us just as much as they are in Krishna. Although, Again, quantitatively is bigger. So it says Nityo Nityanam Chetras Chetanana. The Bishop says that among all the eternal entities, he is the original eternal. Similarly, among all the conscious entities, he is the most conscious, most cognizant. Okay, but those are the qualitatively. That's how we say qualitative with uh, Krishna. Now, um, however, we still in a relative position, not in absolute position. In absolute position, everything is the same. In relative position, everything is not the same. So we are the servant, not the boss. Whether to be enjoyed, not the enjoyed. That's the relative position. Okay, we're talking about that. Okay, we are the controlled, not the controller. Okay, we're subordinate, not the boss. And when we accept all that, then we attain the perfection in life. Otherwise, we are called rebel, which means eternally conditioned soul. This is what's happening to us. Okay? Clear? Om Tat Sat? Yes, Prabhu. Okay. Any questions before we go to the next text? Okay? We we'll go to the next text then. Agarne Ananta Jatta and Sani Vaish Tatarupe Purushukare Sabate Prakash. The Purusha enters each and every one of the countless universes. He manifests himself in as many separate forms as there are universes. So, who are we talking about now? Any guesses? Like Ma Maha Vishnu is the, uh, giving the countless universes. No, no, but this, this no, particular. No, no. No, no. Purusha enter. This Purusha is Mahavishnu. 
and uh, many separate forms are the Garbhodashai Vishnu, I think. Yeah, Garbhodashai Vishnu. You're talking about Garbhodashai Vishnu. Okay. So, 68. Purusha na saate sar jabe bahirai shuhas nishwas sahite hoa dukhande prakash. When the Purusha exists, the universes are manifested. Each order of prakash. So, this is Mahavishnu again. Yes. 69. Purusha na saate sar jabe bahirai shuhas nishwas sahite hoa dukhande prakash. Shwasasa Brahmanda Paishe Purusha Sharma. Thereafter, he inhales all the universes again enter his body. So, exhales, universes come out, inhales. Goes in. Sakuti does not run out of breath ever. That was a little problem. Okay. Don't look so positive, that is just a joke. Anyway. So, purport. Who wants to, who wants to give the purport? I can read Prabhuji if no one is. Yeah, if you're not ready, go ahead. Okay. In his form as Karno Dakshai Vishnu, the Lord impregnate material nature by his glance. The transcendental molecules of that glance are particles of spirit or spiritual atoms, which appears in different species of life according to the seeds of their individual karma from the previous cosmic manifestation. And the Lord himself by his partial representation creates a body of innumerable universes and again enters each of these universes as Garbhodashai Vishnu. His coming in contact with Maya is explained in the Bhagavad Gita by the comparison between air and the sky. The sky enters everything's material, yet it is far away from us. Right. So, so Karnadakshaya Vishnu enters each universe as Karnadakshaya Vishnu. But even though that is within the material world, he remains transcendent. The example is given the sky enters the material world, but it's far away from it. Like, can you ever penetrate the sky? No, because it's so far. Right? Okay, text 70. Tavakshare Ramdejan Tasrinu Kal Chale Purushere Lok Lok Pupe Ramhandere Jale. Just as atomic particles of dust pass through the openings of a window, so the networks of universes pass through the pores of skins of Purusha. What a good time. Have you ever seen sunshine coming through a window? I see, especially in India, I see the dust particles and all that. Anybody seen that? Yeah, Prabhu, so many times. Okay, I just want to make sure. That's what's talking about. Those dust yeah. particles are the universes coming from the body. After other uh, example is given of the body of the Mahavishnu. Mah okay, now it's quoting the Brahma Sangita. So, Aditi, I think you know how to read the Brahma Sangita. So, can you read this, please? Unmute. Yes. Yes. Yaika Nishuvasta. Is it 71, right? 71, yes. Yes. Yaika Nishuvasta Nishuvasta Kalam Kalam Atavalam Bia Jeevan Tiloma Vilajaja Gadananda Nata. Vishnu Mahanasa Iha Yasya Kal Kalavisheshu Govin Namadi Purisham Samham Bajami. Yeah, thank you. The Brahmas and other lords of the mundane verse appear from the pores of Mahavishnu and remain alive for the duration of his one exhalation. I adore the primeval Lord Govinda, of whom Mahavishnu is a portion of plenary portion. Description of the lost creative energy. Sorry, somebody did the purport? Yeah, I can read this. The description of the Lord's creative energy is from the Brahma Samhita 548, which Lord Brahma compiled after his personal realization. When Mahavishnu exhales, the spiritual seeds of the universes emanate from him in the form of molecular particles like those that are visible three times the size of an atom. 
when sunlight is diffused through a small hole. In these days of atomic research, it will be a worthwhile engagement for atomic scientists to learn from this statement how the entire creation develops from the spiritual atoms emanating from the body of the Lord. Right. So, again, we, we know this very well. When the Lord exhales, the universes come out of the pore, pores of the body of the Lord. And they're visible like they sometimes see sunshine coming through a window. We see all the dust particles in that. Okay, 72. Kwaham tamo mahad aham khat charadni varabhu Samveshti tatanda khat shapta vitasi vitasti kaya Vedrig vidhavi vimnati anda Paranucharya Vata Dhuk Doma Vivarasya Chate Mahitvam. Where am I? A small creature of seven spans, measure of any my own hand. I am enclosed in the universe composed of material nature. The total material energy, false ego, ether, air, water, and and what is your glory? Unlimited universes pass through the pores of the body, just like the particles of dust passing through the opening of the body. So this is the prayer by Lord Brahma after Brahma Vimohan Leela. So read the purport, please, somebody. I read it, Prabhuji. Please, Chaitanya, go ahead. When Lord Brahma, after having stolen all Krishna's cows and covered boys, Returned and saw that the cows and the boys were still still roaming with Krishna. He offered these prayers, Bhagavatam 10.14.11, in this defeat. In his defeat. A conditional soul, even one even one so great as Brahma, who manages the affairs of the entire universe, cannot compare to the personality of Godhead, for he can for he can produce numberless universes simply by the spiritual rays emanating from the force of his body. Material, material scientists should take lessons from the utterness of Sri, Sri, Sri Brahma regarding our insignificance in comparison to God. In these prayers of Brahma, there, there is much to learn for those who are falsely offered up by the by the accumulation of power. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, do you know that we are the smallest universe in the whole material world? Yes, Prabhu. How do we know that? From the scripture, we have. What? Where the scripture says that? Yeah, Prithvi is yeah. the like the Earth is the smallest one. No, not about Earth. Not about the universe. Our universe is the smallest universe in the material world. Where does it say that? It's the story of Brahma. Yes, that's the one. When Brahma went to meet Lord Brahma, uh, Lord Krishna, he was asked, which Brahma are you? And she was surprised, so Krishna invited all the other Brahmas. And so but our Brahma had four heads, others had eight, ten, hundred thousand million heads. And the size of the universe depends upon the number of heads of Brahma. So we know the scriptures ask us the smallest. But regardless, how big a body do I need to have to have one universe come out of the pore of my hand? Like how many pores do we have in our body? Hundreds of thousands. Right? One pore is so small that a hair barely fits in. Right? So now the pore is so big that one universe can come out of it. So how, how big the body has to be? Right? That gives an idea of the size of the Lord. And then all these universes are resting on the head of Anantashesh like mustard seeds. So how big would he be? The point I'm making is that this is why the Lord is transcendental. We can't even imagine. We cannot even understand. We cannot even conceive that size. You cannot even conceive that potency. I mean, how strong do you have to be to hold, you know, one uh, 
dining table on your head. <laughs> right? Imagine holding not one universe, but billions of universes on your head. And what is he doing as he's holding them? He's chanting. You talk about having the taste. You're literally chanting the glories of the Lord while holding all these universes. Totally transcendental. Right? I have a question here, Prabhu, about this. Okay. Sorry. So, you know how uh, we talk about the Atma and the Paramatma inside the body, and they give us an idea, like some size for the Atma. But we always say, you know, it's like it's hard to get that concept in our head because we're comparing material and spiritual. So it's different. So are these spiritual bodies like Anandashesh, you know, the Mahavishnu, the pores are coming out. Are these spiritual? So the body of the Lord is always spiritual, obviously. But what's coming out is material. So these sizes yeah. are relative to each other? I'm sorry? So these sizes are relative to each other? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. What's that? One second. I'm saying, are these sizes relative to each other? What do you mean by that? Relative, like like I said, with the spiritual and the material, right? So if they're spiritual, then, like, I guess... Oh, are you saying because you know, uh, I said, how big does it have to be? Is that what you meant? Yeah, yeah, because the Lord can be so tiny. Spiritual has size, too. That is spiritual doesn't have size. Oh, okay, okay. I, I thought it was ever expansive and no, it even can our solar size, even our super soul has a size. Okay, okay. Right? What's the size of the soul? As but, by Krishna. Size what? of a thumb, right? No, soul, soul. Oh, the soul is the ten thousand tip of the hair. Right. And that and the super soul has the size of the thumb, right? The upper part of the thumb. Yeah. Right, so they, they might, spiritual have size. It's not that they don't have size. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Anybody else? Okay, let's move on to seventy-three. Anshir Anshay Kalatar Nam Bhavandir Pati Murti Shi Balaram. A part of a part of a whole is called Kala. Shi Balaram is the counter form. Lord Govinda. Now, so give me an example of a part of a part of a part of Krishna. Yeah, yeah. My wife is in Chirasha Vishnu. So, who's part of Chirasha Vishnu? In other words, whose expansion is Chirasha Vishnu? Uh, Shirodakshai Vishnu. Who's the expansion of? Sh Sorry? Sorry. Okay. You got well, I forgot in the chart that I no the problem is Balaram. Balaram. And it comes the uh, some expectation so of Balaram. Okay. Some question by some question too. Karbo Daksha Vishnu. Yes. Right? And who who is the expansion? Who is Dakshai expansion of? Uh, Karuna Dakshai. Yes. And who is the expansion of? Uh, Mahavishnu. No, no. no. Mahavishnu is Karuna Dakshai. He is the expansion of Balram. No, Mahasankarshan. 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 The second Mahasankarshan, which is second Sankarshan. He is expansion of Narayan. He is expansion of first Sankarshan. He is expansion of first Narayan. The expansion of Balaram is an expansion of Krishna. Correct. So the portion of the portion of the portion of the portion of the portion is Kala. That's the word. Okay, let's read the next one. Make it more clear or more confusing. Tar ek surupashi mahasankarshan tar ashak purishuhoi kalate ganan. Balaram's own expansion is called mahasankarshan. Yes. And his fragment, the purusha, is counted as a Kala, a part of the So. Portion of a portion is called Kala. Portion of a portion of a portion of a portion is also Kala. Okay, 75. Tahake to Kala kahe tiho maha vishnu 
महापुरुष अवतारी तिरोम सर्व जिष्णु आई से दैट दिस कला इज महाविष्णु इज द महापुरुष हु इज द सोर्स ऑफ द अदर पुरुषास ऑल परवेडिंग सो ऑल द अदर पुरुषास आर कमिंग फ्रॉम महाविष्णु महाविष्णु 76 कर बोध शिरोद शाई तुह पुरुष नाम सही दो ही चार और श्री विष्णु विष्णु धाम तो बोध शाई विष्णु अक्षोद शाई विष्णु बोध काल पुरुषास द थ्री पुरुषास राइट I do Prabhu. Go ahead, Patani. Uh, the symptoms of the Purushas are described in the Law Law Ku Bhagavata Bhagavad Bhagavad Gita. Why mm-hmm. distributing the incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead? The author has quoted from the Vishnu Purana six point eight point fifteen nine, where it is said. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto Purushottama, Lord Krishna, who is always free from the contamination of the six material dualities, while <clears throat> whose planetary expansion Mahavishnu glances glances over matter to create the cosmic manifestation, who expands himself in various transcendental form all of which are one and the same who is the master of all living entities who is always free and liberated from the contamination of material energy and who when he appears in this material world seems one of us although he has an eternally spiritual blissful transcendental form in summarizing summarizing this statement rupa goswami has concluded that the planetary expansions of the supreme personality of godhead who acts in cooperation with the material energy is called the purusha hari krishna thank you hari krishna so it says purusha is the The Lord is always free from the contamination of the six material dualities. Anybody knows what the six material dualities are? Um, pleasure and distress. We have I... no. We have propensity to cheat. No, 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 no. That's is that for birth, death, old age? Distress. That's not duality. Dukha, sukh. No. Happiness and distress? No, no. no. Okay, no, let me no. let me answer it. Six material dualities are that the name of a person is not same as the person. That's one duality. Okay. So, the form of the I person. Can you mute yourself, Usha? Ah, uh, the the form of the person is not the same as the person. Okay. Quality of the person is not same as person. The motions of the person is not the same as person, right? Activities of person, not same as the person. These are the dualities, six dualities in the material world. Okay. Where these these dualities do not exist in the Lord. The name is same as the Lord. What is same as the Lord? Right. So, so if if it, like if uh, if a person say something and do something else, that so is duality. Krishna thinks it happens. Krishna thinks it happens. We think doesn't happen. We have to do it. So that's the activity duality. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, so anyway, so he expands into various different forms, and he is always free from the contamination of the material energy. We all know that. Okay. When it comes to the material energy, material world, what does say four point six Bhagavad Gita? जो अपिसन अव्यय आत्मा भूता नाम ईश्वर अपिसन प्रकृति स्वाम अधिष्ठाय संभवामी 
He appears from his own will. Right? And he stays in his own nature. What is his nature? Satchitanand Prabhuji. Huh? Satchitanand. Satchitanand. He stays in that nature. Doesn't change. He doesn't become human being. He doesn't become material. He stays spiritual. That's his other nature. His nature is spiritual. Right? And that's the difference between him and us. So even when he appears in the material world, he may look like a human being. But he is not. But he's not. He may look like a tortoise. He may look like a horse. He may look like a swan. He may look like a boar. But he's not material boar. That body is never material. Mm. Okay? Correct. He remains Satchitanam always. Always remains transcendental. Okay? So, summarizing this statement, Rupa Goswami has concluded that the plenary portions of the Supreme Person of Godhead who acts in cooperation with the material energy is called Purusha. So, the three Purushas, Mahavishnu, Darvadasha Vishnu, Karno Daksha, they are all interacting with Maya, material energy. Purusha. Yep. The is not in Maya. Okay. Okay. So we're going to stop here with any questions or comments. We can talk about that. So Prabhu, when you mentioned that uh, the Anant Shays has all the universes on his hood and at the same time he's chanting, uh, if I'm not wrong, you had mentioned that uh, he doesn't repeat any uh, yeah. name of the Lord uh, yeah. more than yeah. one. He only says it once and then it's That's a right. new name. That's right. That's correct. The Lord Krishna said that even I'm not aware of the limits of my qualities. Hmm. So there's so many. That's right. Okay. Anything else? Okay, we'll stop here. Um, next week, I'm going to be out of country. Oh. So there'll be no class. Oh, my goodness. And uh, then we'll resume again. I'll send a note out. For how long, uh, Prabhuji? Just one week. One week? Yes, ma'am. I miss that you. we can be. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Thank 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 you.